Richard Schilling debuts a new high-tech race car imported from America. Kevin Fisher sets the early pace on day one of the Toyota 1000. Top Toyota pair Philip Milan and Richard Leake spearhead the 4x4 challenge. Desert race history in the making from Richard Manning and the Winston Yamaha. And finally, rally aces Hannah Strobler and Pete Swanepoel back in off-road racing. All this and much more as Total South Africa bring you a review of the recent Toyota 1000 Desert Race, third round of the Total GTE Off-Road Championship. Total, earning our stripes for you, earning our stripes in motorsport. The Toyota 1000 Desert Race is traditionally one of the highlights of the South African Off-Road Championship. Staged each year in the rugged northwestern Cape countryside, this event is a test of man and machinery. Pre-race paddocks are always a hive of activity before a major motorsport event. Apart from last-minute checks on machinery, there is always a spirit of camaraderie and friendly rivalry wherever off-road enthusiasts gather. This year, the organizers did away with the traditional pre-event round-the-houses plug vote. And the Thursday before the race was given over to the documentation and the official scrutineering of vehicles. With no round-the-houses race to determine grid positions, the starting order was determined by way of a draw. The Toyota 1000 Desert Race takes competitors on a two-day loop between Freiburg and Taylor's Pan. Clock of the course, Peter Monsieur Wilson predict a tough times ahead for the crew. Conditions are going to be very dusty. They haven't had rain down here for quite a while. Uh, the other problem they're going to experience is grass seed. Uh, the grass in some places is a metre high and some of them are battling again to see the other track, the other spur of the track. So there's going to be problems in that area. Off-road race organisers are fond of early morning stops. With the sun rising over chilly Freiburg, crews lined up for the start with competitors preoccupied with race tactics for the 480 kilometre slog to Taylor's Pan. No, it's a long way, that's all I can say. and. Um... I maintain the guy that uh, can stay in the car until overnight stop and not get out and leave the overnight stop and get back to Freiburg here without getting out the car, that's going to be the winning car. This is always moeilijk om voor te rijden, want the bewijs daarvan is die baba span, die ons wat voor rij, is gewoonlijk die ons wat die slagheisters aftrap en die ons wat na jou kom sien dan waar jy die foute begaan het en dan begaan hulle nie die selde foute nie. I'm looking forward to getting to the front of the race and, uh, and try and get to the refuel in the first five if we can because I think we're going to make up our time uh, from the refuel on in the thick sand. We've got the power, so we've got to use that to our advantage. So up until the refuel, it's going to be quite tight and dusty. We're going to pick them off as we can, and uh, after that, we'll try and give it a squirt. Klaus Degener with former driver Derek Pinoy in the navigator's seat was the first car away. While Degener disappeared into the distance, there were early problems for local farmer R.P. Reinecke and Luca Strea who had drawn second place. Electrical problems delayed them on the line and they eventually got away in 30th position. Out on the route, Degener and Pinoy were setting a brisk early pace in the Duckham's Chenoweth. When the leading cars reached Southie, the Bux carolyn kenny Schkolthammer combination had moved into second place in the Raceco Porsche. Not far behind them were transplanted Australian Robin Yates, who now lives in Durban, and Nardis Alberts in the Perma Products race co. Back at the start, and it was the turn of the bikers, an hour and a half after the cars, to form up on the line. For many motorsport enthusiasts, the bikers are the real off-road heroes. The riders take punishment, and the competition is tough. I think it's probably the toughest in all the classes, because you've got one of... Any one of four guys could win, you know. Um, I hope to do well. There's Brian, Yuri Human, who's just come back from his toe. I think that's really brave of him to ride. I just hope he doesn't have any problems. And then there's Alex, who won Barber's Cup. So it'll be pretty tough. Out there. For riders, thorns in the thick northwestern Cape Bush are a major concern. Well, it's mainly always I get hit by thorns. You just wear these sleeves, they help a little bit. And... Teenager Alex Valls Jr. has emerged as one of off-road racing's rising stars. I've got more time to train and they've got a lot of work to do. So I just train hard and hopefully I can be fitter than them. And if I am, then I can catch them. 
Hopefully I'll beat them. There was plenty of adrenaline starting to pump on the start line and Kevin Fisher on the Rock Oil KTM, who drew first position, led away the bike brigade. He was followed by Lesotho rider Patrick Andrews on the Lesotho office equipment KTM, who was amongst the pre-race favourites. Also amongst the pre-race favourites was John Hodgson, but it was Kevin Fisher who had to find a compromise between an early pace that would keep him ahead and one that would conserve machinery. On the smoother sections, the bikers fly, with Patrick Andrews going flat out to try and catch Fisher. Richard Manning on the 200cc Winston Yamaha was making his intentions clear early on, and at Southie was involved in a great dice with Kevin Tebbett on the 500cc Honda. Leading the 250 class at Southie was Yanni Debrain on the NGK Team Green Kawasaki. The famous riverbed section on the way to the Linnepen service point saw Bux Carolyn and Kenny Schkolkhammer in the lead in the Porsche-powered race car. It was good to see former national rally and off-road champions Hanna Skrobler and Pete Swanepoel back in action. And they were leading class six for four x four vehicles in the Nissan one tonner. After their delay at the start, RB Reinecke and Lukas Dreyer were carving their way through the field in that BP Ford while Castrol Barberspan 500 winners Alfred van Vieren and Piet Pelzer were again a model of consistency in the Class 5 Toyota Hilux. Roger Westermeyer was also having a good run to lead Class 9 ahead of early pace setter Harry Roscoe, who had run into mechanical problems. There were also mechanical problems for Fred Levesque in the Motortech Raceco, and a broken camshaft belt brought his race to an end. In a homemade special that took him just four weeks to build, Wolf Peter Fumfe was leading Class 10. On the bike front, Patrick Andrews scattered a few four-legged local inhabitants as he arrived at the dinner pen refuel, 180 kilometers into the event, just ahead of Errol Dalton on the Bird Paradise Kawasaki. The locals have a soft spot for motorcycle competitors, and Richard Manning acknowledged the cheers as he went through in third place. Manning was still ahead on the 200 class and was closely followed by Kevin Tebbett on the Sun City Honda. While one local demonstrated horsepower of a different kind, Yuri Himmen appeared to be unaffected by his recent foot operation and was running in a steady seventh place. A great battle had developed for the lead between Klaus Degener and Derek Pinoy and Bux Carolyn and Kenny Schkolthammer, who had been delayed by a puncture. Robin Yates and Nardis Alberts were still in third place, but had developed a serious engine misfire, which was to lead to their retirement. There were no such problems for Greg Weeble and Warren Clarson, who were going well in the ex carolyn Raceco Kajima. Freiburg dentist Harry Kirstein and Dries de Klerk were lying second in Class 6 in the ex Reinecke Nissen, with Steve Parker and VZ van Zale locked in a seesaw battle in Class 7 with Craig Hopkinson and Kathy Shimwell. For the bikers, running out of petrol was a common problem. Leader Patrick Andrews was one of those to suffer, but Errol Dalton sportingly stopped to lend a hand. Not long afterwards, it was Dalton's turn to run out of gas, and this time it was the turn of Andrews to play Good Samaritan. It was indicative of the sportsmanship that exists between off-road racers. With a sprawling tent town that had sprung up at the overnight stop of Taylor's Pan beckoning, Bux Carolyn and Kenny Schkolthammer had regained the lead after 480 kilometers of tough racing. Carolyn and Skoldhammer were still being chased by Klaus Degener and Derek Pinoy, who provided for some drama on the run into the finish line. Degener and Pinoy trailed in 20 minutes behind the leaders. Hey. 
Alfred van Vuren and Piet Pelzer are perhaps the most consistent pair in current off-road racing and were third over the line in the Toyota Hilux. Patrick Andrews was the first of the bikers at the overnight stop and the Lesotho rider voiced a few misgivings about what lay ahead of the competitors the next day. The first, the first 50 k's coming in this way, we have to go back the same route. I don't know what the organizers have done there. It's, you can't ride through that, even walk, I mean, it's just bushes everywhere. So I'm just gonna play it easy, take it easy. And after the halfway point, I'm gonna start going again. For weary competitors and service crews, the day is not over, with much needed maintenance to be done on battered machinery. But leader okay. Carolyn was happy. Right. The car went well. We got a few problems. We knocked over a fence and we got fence tied up in the hubs. We're just taking that all out now. Uh, we don't have any other major problems. We'll be there tomorrow. Carolyn and Skullthammer had a handy lead at the overnight stop, with the tough conditions taking a heavy toll, with only 17 of the 71 starters on the survivors list. A great performance on the 200 Yamaha saw Richard Manning in second place amongst the bikers, with Yuri Himmen also in the top five. After a tough day of racing comes the time to relax in front of the friendly campfire, with no shortage of yarns there for the telling. This is part of the lure of off-road racing, but most could do without the inevitable pre-dawn wake-up calls. Looks Carolyn and Kenny Skolthammer led away the field, but just 10 kilometers from Taylor's Pan is a now infamous sand dune waiting to provide competitors with an early problem. The sand dune is a favourite with spectators who love to be a part of the fun and games. For the competitors, it's often no joking matter, although for second place Klaus Degener and Derek Punoy, it was a piece of cake. <laughs> Old friends often meet once a year at the sand dune, and there is an air of expectancy as vehicles arrive to tackle a short stretch of the route that can put pay to many a competitor's race prospects. There were also no problems for third-placed Alfred von Furen and Piet Pelze in the Toyota Hilux. By the time Hannes Krobler and Pete Swanepoel arrived on the scene at a rapid rate of knots in the Nissan One Tonner, they had been reduced to a two-wheel drive and decided on a boldness be my friend policy. It worked, but others were not so fortunate. Here comes Wolf Peter Fumfei. And here comes Wolf Peter Fumfei again. yet for Mr. Fumfai. It's Mr. Fumfai again, Mom. There were no fun and games at the sand dune for the bikers, with Patrick Andrews still out in the lead. But all was not well with the Lesotho rider. Andrews arrived at a checkpoint where it was clear there was a problem with the Lesotho office equipment KTM. There were plenty of onlookers as Andrews consulted with team manager Ralph Pitchford and team owner Butch Hirsch. And there was frantic activity around the KTM. With the earlier casualty Eric Dalton looking on, Andrews attempted to get underway again. But the KTM's gearbox had seized. It was a no-go situation and the disgusted rider made his feelings clear. With Andrews out of the running, Richard Manning found himself out in the lead on Winston Yamaha, and there was a prospect of history in the making. 
No 200 class machine had ever won the Toyota 1000 Desert Race and Manning's service crew were quick to let him know that Andrews was now a frustrated onlooker. Consistent ride had moved Kevin Tebbett into second place on the Sun City Honda, with an anxious Yuri Himan Sr. waiting for Yuri Jr., who was still going strong, only to retire later with engine trouble. At the dinner pen service point, there was more drama. What temperature can I run this thing at, Rich? What temperature? Hey? Huh? No, I mean this this thing here. Yeah, the oil temperature. Oh, What's 250? 250, man. Okay. Is that maximum? 250. That's what it's running. It's running on 250. Yeah, but there was no oil in there. Okay, George, we can't. Yeah. Just blow it anyway from underneath if you can, Rich. The leaders, Bugs Carolyn and Kenny Skullhammer, reported in with overheating problems, thought to be caused by grass seed clogging up the cooling systems or by a burnt piston. The pair got going again, but were finally forced to retire 150 kilometers from the finish. This put Klaus Degener and Derek Pinoy back in the lead, and they weren't going to let minor details like closed gates halt their progress. Any vantage point will do for spectators along the route. They had a grandstand view of Richard Manning, now firmly entrenched in the bike lead on the Winston Yamaha in full cry. Alfred von Fieren and Piet Pelzer were still having a trouble-free run in the four-cylinder Toyota Hilux and had moved into second place. Local knowledge comes in handy and Freiburg dentist Henry Kirstein and Dries de Klerk were third on the road and leading class six in the Nissan Safari 4x4. Swaziland rider Kevin Dupont was leading the 250 class on the Truck Africa KTM. Dupont was third on the road at this stage but had to settle for fourth place at the finish. There was also a trouble-free run for Greg Weevil and Warren Clarson. The pair came home third overall for the best result to date in off-road racing. One of the best contests in the race was in Class 3, where Donnie and Haas van Amerwe, in a two-wheel drive Toyota Hilux, fought a running battle throughout the event with Theo Kutsia and Ian Wedderburn in the American-built Chev. Honours in a close duel finally went to the van Amerwe's. Back at the finish, and a huge crowd was waiting for the winners, with Klaus Degener and Derek Pinoy providing a late flourish as they came home 28 minutes ahead of Alfred van Furen and Piet Pelzer. For Degener, so often the bridesmaid on previous Toyota 1000 desert races, it was a moment of sweet triumph. It's incredible after working so hard, after so many disappointments in um, racing, particularly off-road racing, coming second so many times, third. To actually win the Toyota 1000 now is, is, I still can't, it hasn't sunk in, it's fantastic, it's the most incredible feeling. Um, and I'd like to thank my co-driver Derek Pinoy, who actually drove 100 k's as well today, and uh, without him it wouldn't have been possible. A well-deserved triumph for Klaus Degener and Derek Pinoy. With only 10 cars making it to the finish in one of the toughest Toyota 1000 desert races yet. History was made when Richard Manning took the bike honours after a superb performance and became the first rider to win the Toyota 1000 desert race on a 200cc machine. It's much too fast, you know. I thought the 500s would catch us. But I just, I just went full out from this morning. While Manning was most definitely the man of the moment, five different manufacturers were all featured in the top ten finishers. The Toyota 1000 Desert Race, third round of the Toyota GTE Off-Road Championship.